So I got this scroll in Bali when I was 15 years old. I'm gonna quickly read this to you and this is going to serve the basis for the whole video. So, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are all powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented and fabulous? Actually, who are we not to be? You are a child of God, whether or not you believe in that. You playing small in the world does not serve anyone. There is nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are meant to shine. We are meant to manifest the glory within us. It is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Now, allegedly, Nelson Mandela said this. Allegedly, because when you Google it, it says someone else said it. So, the truth is, we'll never know. All I know is that this has been on my wall for the past seven years, and I could not relate to it until the past couple of years when I finally understood what it meant. So, let's dive into this a little bit. If you have any goals, especially if they're big goals, it's just a fact you're going to be faced with haters and people who don't support you. And you know why that is? It's because other people are afraid that you're going to succeed. God forbid you achieve your goals because you know what? That means the people who didn't go for their own goals, who didn't believe they could achieve their wildest dreams, failed themselves because they didn't have the strength to go down the path that you went down. Anyone that's ever done anything great or gone down a non-traditional route has been faced with criticism, haters, and people who just didn't fucking believe in them. I honestly think, and know this to be true, that if you have big goals, big dreams, people will shit on them. And it's not because maybe they don't believe in you, it's probably because they don't believe in themselves. They hear what you want to achieve and they think, no, she, she or he, or they, <laughs> They're not, gonna, they're not going to achieve it because I don't believe that I would achieve it myself. So they're just projecting their own fears onto you. So when other people are trying to put you down, you really have to consider how do they feel about themselves. So don't take it personally. You know what's so funny? And I think I've told this story, but when I was 16, 17, and I said, I'm going to do YouTube, my friends literally told me, you're not going to make it. And you know what's funny? When I actually achieved... My YouTube goals and I started to make really good money from YouTube a couple of those friends disappeared because they were so embarrassed that they didn't believe in me because they projected their own insecurity onto me now it's my other friends who were entrepreneurial or maybe they were going down a non-traditional job route they are the ones that believed in me and they always supported me and through that I'm just emphasizing it's really important to find like-minded people like-minded people, people who are also going for big goals, big dreams, they're not going to hate on you because they believe in themselves. And that's why they are going down that route as well. It's a lonely route to the top. In fact, you're going to leave a lot of people on the road to the top because some people, they don't want to go to the top or they can't handle it or they're comfortable where they are. And there's also nothing wrong with that. Side note, I don't think it's right how TikTok and social media nowadays, they really push the narrative that if you're in a nine to five, you're failing life. You're not. For some people, nine to fives truly suit them better. If you feel like you should be drop shipping or doing SMMA or affiliate marketing or something that these other people are preaching and you feel like a failure because, oh, God forbid, you're in a really comfortable nine to five job that maybe you don't even hate, that you're failing, you're not. <laughs> So another thing I really like about this quote, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate, it's that we're powerful. Sometimes we're afraid of our own power and we're actually afraid of what happens when we get our desires because we're not ready for it. Recently I was talking with my friend and we both said, if our soulmate came into our life tomorrow, we would probably tell them to go away because we're not ready. If my dream life also appeared tomorrow, all the success in the world I want to achieve throughout my entire life fell into my lap tomorrow, I think I would be a very miserable person because now the journey of life is gone. I've achieved everything. And you know what's funny? Some people, and I noticed in myself, when I, get a clo when I get close to achieving really big goals, sometimes I'll sabotage it because I know subconsciously I'm not ready to achieve it. And sometimes it can also be because we're afraid of what other people will think of us. Now that you've achieved this big goal, 
you're kind of out of the league you used to be in. And through that, you have to leave those other people behind. And it can be really, really terrifying. And I also think this world, especially social media, it tries to humble you. You're really successful. Don't boast about it online. Don't tell other people. You're rich. Don't tell other people. Act humble. This is especially in Australia. We have something called tall poppy syndrome where we like to keep everyone at the same level. If you're successful, we don't want to hear about it. It is our light, not our darkness, that enlightens us. And through that, we should not shrink ourselves because when we shrink ourselves, we don't give other people permission to shine. And I really like that because guys, when you are unapologetically yourself, you're doing your thing. Maybe you're going down the non-traditional route we talked about. You are indirectly giving other people permission to then be themselves. And a, a good example of this was when I started YouTube in high school, the type of videos I was making was very silly. Like maybe 2016, 2019, this type of humor, it was not common on the internet back then. And I remember I would feel like kind of a bit insecure about being this way online because I was like, oh, this is like too weird. But then obviously that is what initially blew me up on YouTube. People loved my humor. And through that, people were saying to me, Simone, you gave me so much confidence to be myself and you helped me in so many ways. You know, that's just an example of when you're yourself, you're giving other people permission to also be themselves. And if you feel like you make other people feel insecure, that's literally a them problem. All my life, people would say to me, Simone, you're kind of intimidating. Like maybe it's my resting bitch face. Maybe it's a, a host of factors. And I used to really dim myself and my achievements and who I was. I would try to make myself look uglier to make these insecure people around me feel better. And then I had this epiphany when I was 19 where I just realized, fuck you. I actually like myself and if you're intimidated, that is not my problem. And there are other people in the world you can find and be friends with who will literally accept you for who you are. And also it's not really good having insecure friends. But that's for another video. You should never have to dim your light for other people or shrink yourself. Just be unapologetically you and if people can't accept that then fuck them. Because there are people in the world who will accept you for who you are. And if you feel the need to conform your personality to what they think is normal or appropriate, ding yourself, shrink yourself, change yourself, those people are not for you. You will find better friends. Why would you want people in your life that don't accept you? I've had people in my life that don't accept me and it's a really fucking terrible feeling. And you, when you step away from that situation and those people, you realize it's just because they hate themselves as well. So they want to keep you subordinate. They want to keep you down here because they're also afraid of what happens. What happens when you leave them? What happens when you start to ascend to the top? They're still down here because they don't have the courage to go to the top. They just want to stay here. People will always project their insecurity onto you. And I know I've touched on a lot of different topics here, but one of the main points I want to ingrain into you is that how people feel is not a you problem. It has nothing to do with you. And if someone starts projecting their insecurity onto you, brush it off, leave them. I know it's easier said than done, but if you feel like someone keeps trying to drag you down, then maybe you should consider leaving that friendship or relationship. Life is too short to be around shitty people, especially when there are so many people in the world who will love you and accept you. So yeah, let's touch on haters a little bit more. I posted this on my Instagram story maybe a month ago and I said, haters are ugly. They have nothing going for them. They hate themselves. And that's why they hate on other people because they're just projecting their own insecurity. You're never going to have anyone that's actually working on themselves and has things going on in their life hating on you, especially if they're going down a similar path to you. Something I also noticed with haters, especially online, is that they hate people who are free and themselves because they wish they can be free, but they're trapped in the cage of their own mind. And you know, sometimes I am trapped in the cage of my own mind. I think about fucking everything. I analyze everything, but it doesn't mean I go and hate on other people who are free. You know what I turn that into? I turn it into inspiration. I'm inspired by them. 
How can I be more like them? So guys, if you have noticed that maybe you're a hater, maybe you see someone online living your dream life or I don't know, being free, whether that's personality wise or literally free in life where they're traveling uninhibited and you feel hate towards them, try to turn it into inspiration. How can you live a life like that? How can you be more like that? Seriously, I've never had a hater that is attractive. I've never had a hater that has something going for themselves. It's always the people who are chronically online, depressed, alone in the room, no friends, hate themselves. Emphasis on the hate themselves part. Someone that loves themselves is not gonna go out there and purposely put out negativity into the world or purposely try to make someone's day bad. Anyway, that's the end of this rant. Go check out my main channel. Go check out my Instagram. I hope you got something out of this video. Ich liebe dich. Tschüss.